How to design an on-catchment bioretention system using SWIM. So, um, a bioretention system on the surface might look uh, something like this. So, generally, how it is um, described is that it's a it's a depression on the surface that contains vegetation, oftentimes grown in engineered soil mixture because the soil mixture is designed so that it can support some kind of vegetation but at the same time uh, it has uh, very good infiltration properties. Underneath the soil layer we have uh, under drain uh, and a gravel layer. So this gravel layer is very important because it provides um, considerable amount of storage uh, making this also act as a, some sort of a detention storage. A cross-section of such a system and this is a bit of a special uh, bioretention system because it was designed for Singapore which uh, receives very intense uh, tropical rainfall. So here the speciality is that the gravel layer thickness is quite uh, quite large, about 750 millimeters instead of typical 200 millimeters or so. So um, our example is a bioretention facility with 200 millimeters of surface storage. That is this um, where this level on the surface where the water can be retained. 400 millimeter soil layer, this layer, and 750 rather thick gravel layer with an under drain. So the real engineering design is shown here. If we want to explicitly model this, it is possible to do that uh, using a combination of LID and uh, some uh, links and nodes. Uh, uh, in SWIM, but that is not the purpose of this video, but we are going to do a simplified model of this, uh, which is accurate enough uh, to catchment-wide consideration. So let's start with, uh, with our example catchment. So I have opened SWIM here. Okay, let me save it uh, as bioretention. Okay, so at the moment we have a catchment of 0.6 hectares. These are the properties, and it has the impervious fraction of 10%. So we'll consider a a nice scenario where impervious fraction has increased to let's say about 45 or 50 percent. In this case let's take 50. So this is the baseline case. Let me save it again and run this case. So for this we have provided a rainfall data set that goes through an year. So you can see it looks like this. So, uh, and then if you want to look at the runoff out of the catchment, you can do it. Yeah, looks like this. So, this is our baseline case. Now I'm going to retrofit this with uh, our LID system. So, let me call it um, another name with bioretention this time. And so, as usual, we start by defining a lid control for the bioretention. Add an object, so we'll call it bioret. 
and the type is biotension cell fine and then we go on defining our uh, parameters for the bioretention system. First we start with the surface, berm height, that is the storage height that we will we would allow uh, on the bioretention cell surface before it overflows. So in our case it's 200 millimeters. Vegetation volume, how much volume out of that space taken up as a fraction by plants? Let's say for simplicity let's say it's about 5 percent. Surface roughs uh, roughness is not important because this is not a flowing structure. Surface loss is also not important. Now let's go to the soil properties and thickness of the soil is 400 millimeter as we discussed. Porosity uh, we leave it as it is uh, 0.5. Fill capacity 0.2. Will team point, point 0.1. Typical values. Conductivity let's put a value about 120. So I'm going to go for a really sandy soil here. You can look at the soil characteristics tables to get uh, and conductivity slope is a value between usually around 30. Um, suction head say about 45. Then we go to the storage layer that is the gravel layer underneath. So there we have a thickness of 750 millimeters void ratio we we'll leave it as it is uh, this is different from porosity right porosity is volume fraction this is voids divided by solids volume so it's, it's a bit larger for, even if it is same soil but this is not the same soil as our soil this is a uh, um, this is a gravel bed seepage rate this is the infiltration at the bottom this one how much infiltration can it happen can it make so generally it is the hydraulic conductivity of the soil around um, so let's make it into something some sort of a loam or loamy sand and clogging factor for the moment uh, let's keep it zero for simplicity then we need a, uh, we need a some sort of drain at the bottom so the flow coefficient is really in this case i believe it is more or less trial and error but let me start with something like 0 0.05 offset 6 millimeters that is from the bottom it's 6 millimeter bow so if you like you can make it zero but let's leave it as it is so now we have defined our lead control so then we need to go to the catchment and start defining uh, these units within the catchment so um, lead controls are not there at the moment so add one and the type is bioretention and let's say that we are going to have about 200 square meters one unit so that means 200 so about three percent of the catchment is cars rather rather large system here the percentage of impervious area treated let's assume in this case that the total catchment is draining down into this um, this bioretention system before it goes into the stormwater system now importantly we need to specify um, A detailed report file because that will give us an idea of what is going on in this system uh, while the model is running so done okay okay and um, remember the shape of this graph and the nature of it before we run it uh, and we can immediately see how it how it may or may not change because of um, the introduction of LID so at the moment the peak runoff is about 75 liters in this high rainfall event and then there is uh, many uh, small uh, runoff events the running of this will take some time because it's it's a one year uh, time series but now something interesting happened most of the you know small runoff events have vanished because our LIDs are handling them 
so there is no runoff into the drainage system so it is practically disconnected for day-to-day -day events for large events also because of our thick gravel layer we can see a considerable reduction about 10 to 12 percent reduction of the peaks so um, uh, so that that gives us a lot of confidence that this thing works uh, as we intended let me open our interface file uh, it is uh, we gave it bioretention txe this one so here our usual um, the detailed report gives gives us what is going on in the different layers for example uh, the gravel bed storage uh, you know for normal rainfall events you can see water even does not reach that gravel bed but when you go to some high rainfall events Yeah, so you can see our storage is filling up when there's high rainfall event. Otherwise, it is completely empty. So, um, if we understand the statistics um, of the rainfall regime uh, of our area of interest, we can go and fine tune these uh, various properties of our LID. But that is not the purpose of this lesson. This is just to understand how we can do the basic design of a bioretention basin.